you this morning, if you will, to please turn in your Bibles to the book of John. I would like to read from John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Most everyone is familiar with the third uh, chapter of John where Nicodemus went to Jesus by night. There was a, uh, a lot of teaching that went on from Jesus in that passage of Scripture. I want us just to read the first two verses. We tried to study recently about teaching and the importance of teaching. Uh, We can teach in a lot of different ways. And uh, today I want us to think about the greatest teacher that has ever been. And that's our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I want all of us to know that if we're not learning from our teacher, and there were three or four of the songs that we sang this morning that we're saying for God to teach us. And we need to pray every day that God will teach us. We studied recently that God said, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. In order to, to get knowledge, you need a teacher. You need somebody to help you understand various things. And so... We need to all realize that Jesus is not only our Savior and our King, but Jesus is our teacher. And He is teaching us. Sometimes we're not paying attention. And I pray that God will help us to learn from our Lord and our Savior. We might listen to what He says and that we might do as He did. There are two main ways that you teach. One is you teach with your mouth. You teach with words. That's a very common way to teach. And Jesus did a lot of teaching like that. We'll see. The second way to teach is by example. Show me how to do it. Show me how to live. Jesus taught both by words and he taught by example. Look in your Bibles now. John chapter 3 beginning with verse 1. The word of God says that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. I want us to think about how Nicodemus understood and stated, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He was a great teacher. He was the best teacher that has ever lived. Whether you're talking about teaching with words or you're teaching by example, Jesus is the great teacher and Nicodemus understood that and he said, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. I want us to see just a few minutes now that the word of God tells us that everywhere Jesus went that Jesus was teaching. And to begin with, I think I want us just to look at the fact that he was teaching by the things that he was saying. He was telling us the will of God. He was telling us the truth. He was telling us and teaching us just as he was teaching these people that he was literally in their presence. As we read the word of God, we find that he is still, Jesus is still teaching us today if we pay attention and listen to what he has to say. You know, a teacher can have all the knowledge in the world and a great gift in teaching, but sometimes students don't pay attention. Many times children do not learn because they're not paying attention and they're not studying and parents are not teaching their children. I want you to know that Jesus did an excellent job of teaching. There was nothing wrong with his message and there was nothing wrong with his gift in teaching but many people did not believe and listen to what he had to say therefore they did not learn and please remember God says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge if we don't listen to our teacher we're going to be destroyed Matthew chapter 7 turn very quickly in your 
uh, Bibles to Matthew. I'm John, we're, we're in John, John chapter three. Now look at John chapter seven. I'm just going to mention three or four scriptures that just literally tell us in the Bible, full of many others that tell us Jesus went about teaching. In John chapter seven, listen please to verses fourteen and fifteen. John chapter seven, verses fourteen and fifteen. The Word of God says, "Now about the about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up." into the temple and what did he do there? And he taught. He was teaching in the temple. Many times, in fact most of the time, the Bible talks about Jesus teaching. It talks about him teaching in the temple. I want you to know, brethren, that the, that the, that the Word of God teaches that we have the church that is established by Jesus Christ today. And in his church, there ought to be a lot of learning, there ought to be a lot of teaching, just as there was teaching in the temple during the days of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught in the temple, he taught in other places, but we find here he taught in the temple. Verse 15 says, And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? <laughs> they missed the last part, didn't they? Jesus did learn as a man he learned. The Bible says that he increased in knowledge and wisdom and stature as a man. We also know that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh, so he knew all things. So to say that he never learned, listen brethren, you didn't know who he was when you say he never learned. You, those that were amazed at what he was teaching, they did not realize who Jesus was. They did not realize as Nicodemus did. Thou art a teacher come from God. These people marveled at what he was teaching as he was there teaching in the temple. Turn one more page to John chapter 8. Listen to verses 1 and 2. The word of God says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and, what are the last two words there? He taught them. He sat down and he taught them again. He's teaching the people the truth. He's teaching people the word of God. He's teaching people the things that they need to know that will save them from destruction. Back up in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5 as we think about the Sermon on the Mount. Well, notice right before the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 4, Look in your Bibles at Matthew now, Matthew chapter 4. I want you to notice that Jesus, as he's going all about from city to city, everywhere he goes, he's teaching. One of the greatest blessings that I have as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just to preach the word of God in the house of God and teach the word of God in the house of God, but one of the greatest blessings we have and you have is that everywhere we go, we can be teaching others. And we need to be teaching others. That's what Jesus did. And Jesus said, give me two words that Jesus said to all of us as he said to those apostles when he chose them. Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. Now, if he's the great teacher, one of the ways we ought to follow him is that we ought to be teaching others just like he was teaching others. Matthew chapter 4, listen please to verse 23. The word of God says in Jesus went about all Galilee. What's the next word? Teaching, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You know what I want to teach? I want to teach the word of God and I want to preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus did. He went about all Galilee teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I want you to know Jesus was going about Teaching. Come down to chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Begins what we call the Sermon on the Mount. You know what he was doing in the Sermon on the Mount? Brethren, Jesus did more teaching in the next three chapters. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. There's more teaching. There are more truths in that three pages of God's Word than you can ever begin to comprehend. Jesus, in one sermon, he covered more material than anybody could ever cover, and he covered it explicitly. He was teaching. Matthew 5, 1 and 2, the Word of God says, in seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, 
his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, and he begins then, the Sermon on the Mount begins with the Beatitudes, but all through his <coughs> message he was, what was he doing to those people? He was teaching them now. As he was teaching them, some of them listened and learned, and some of them didn't pay attention. <coughs> you and I, as the people of God, we need to pray, God, open my ears. Help me to hear what you're saying. Help me to follow what you're teaching me. And Lord, teach me every day, just like you went all around all the different cities while you were here in the earth, and you were teaching the people, Lord, open my eyes that I may... See, open my ears that I may hear. Help me to hear the things you're teaching me. Jesus is teaching you, talking to you, speaking to you in his word. And we need to be learning what he is teaching us. Look in your Bibles at John chapter 13. I want us to think now, not about him teaching with his mouth. So far, that's mainly what I've been talking about. Is Jesus going from city to city teaching people with the words he was saying. But now I want us to spend the rest of the time this morning looking at Jesus' teaching, not just by the words of his mouth, but I want you to think about how he taught us by example. I love for people just to say, follow me, or I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Come watch me do it. Brother Drew, you know how to plant a flower now? He planted about 50 flowers yesterday. I knew that it would take about five or six, seven, eight flowers for him to finally learn. Now, he probably already knew how to plant a flower the way others might want him to do it, but I've got my way to plant a flower. Well, the first ten bulbs easy and fun for you? They weren't fun. Why? There's a tyrant standing by and you're saying, didn't you listen to me? Didn't I just tell you you have to get that one? Don't, didn't I tell you you got to get the roots down? Listen, brethren, by finished eight or ten bulbs, he, I could leave him alone. And he did all the rest of them by himself. He had to be taught. Now, he can go to your house. You can teach him your way, but I want you to know all of us need to learn every day. We need to learn things every day. There's some of you parents that you teach your children all the time. I can take some of these children and take them to my house and I can say, go do this, go do this, here's your list, go do all these things. And they can go and they can do them and they can build things and they can work and they can labor and they're better than 90% of the men on this earth. You know why? Their fathers have been teaching them, teaching them. You think they just wrote out instructions? You think they just told them with their mouth? Or what do you think those daddies did where the children really know how to work and have a good work ethic and they labor and they study and they study lessons and they study their books and they study how to work? How do they get all that? Somebody taught them not just with their mouth but by, by examples. Take lazy parents. You know what kind of children you're going to have? Lazy children, almost without exception. You take hard-working, industrious parents. You take parents that really work with their children. You take, take parents that will say, this idea of you saying, don't do as I do, do as I say. That's, that's straight from the devil. You need to say, watch me. Follow me. That's what Jesus said. He just said, follow me. I'll teach you. All of us, brethren, we need to be showing people how to be a Christian. It's not good enough for you to stand around and tell people how to be a Christian. You need to show them how to be a Christian. All of us as God's children, we need to be teaching others. But we need to be taught so that we can then teach. Jesus taught by example. He just said, follow me. Was he teaching them? Yes, he was. Look in your Bibles now. John chapter 13. Listen please to verses 13 through 17. He's going to teach them something here. He's teaching his apostles something here. I want you to watch carefully as they're about to uh, enter into the Last Supper. And, uh, well, this is really when they're having the feet washing service. He's going to teach them something about washing feet. Now, brethren, it was not the custom of people to kneel down and wash each other's feet. 
It was custom when somebody came to your house for you to give them some water and a bowl and let them wash their own feet. But Jesus was going to teach them something more than just getting the feet clean. Feet washing service doesn't have anything to do with cleaning people's feet. You know the one time a year I wash my feet more than any other time? You know when I scrub them down more than any other time? It's at feet washing. I don't come to church to get my feet clean. I come to church to have feet washing because it's an example that Jesus said, do it. But I'll tell you, my feet are clean. And I even put a little, a little uh, old spice on my feet. It's the only time of the year I ever put old spice on my feet. And now I want them to smell good. I don't want to offend you at feet washing. Jesus taught them humility. He knew what they were all going to do. He told them. He says, you're all going to forsake me. He says, not me, Lord. I'll die with you. No, you're all going to forsake me. Oh, Peter said, no, not me, Lord. All the rest of them may for Not me. I'll never deny you. And Peter did deny him. And all of them did forsake him. And yet he knelt down before they all did that. Knowing what they were going to do. He still knelt down and washed their feet. Humility. In spite of the thoughts and the problems and the sins in those other people's lives. In spite of the shortcomings of his apostles. He knelt down and washed their feet. Did he show him what to do? He could have just stood there and said, Go on, get down and wash each other's feet now. He didn't do that. He said, in John chapter 13, beginning with verse 13, You call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an... What's the next word? I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. I have washed your feet. You are to wash one another's feet. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Brethren, we ought to be willing to kneel down and wash our brother's feet. There better not be a single person in this church that I'm not willing to kneel down and wash your feet who taught us that is it just a, was it a tradition that wasn't a tradition in fact Peter Jesus told Peter said, you don't understand what I'm doing right now but you'll know later and brethren you, I think one of the most humbling uh, touching Spirit-filled services of the entire year is when we have the feet washing and the communion service. I don't believe there's any time, and I believe the church body, as far as I know, if there's anybody who's got a problem with somebody else in the church, I don't know about it. If I find out about it, we'll have a little powwow. The three or four of us will sit down and talk. But listen, brethren, that, that communion service, when you kneel down and wash one another's feet, I encourage you to always get, if there's anybody you don't feel close to, you kneel down and wash their feet. You know what will happen? You'll feel close to them when that's over. God will just melt your hearts together and bind you together. And, and we have the right hand of Christian fellowship. What did Jesus do? Did he teach them something? Did he teach us something? He taught us many things, but one of the main things he taught us right here is humility. He also said that the servant is not greater than his Lord. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. If Jesus would kneel down and wash someone's feet, he says, happy are ye if you do what I've done. And I pray that God will help all of us to never be ashamed of feet washing because it's an example Jesus gave us. John chapter 15. He taught by example there in John 13. John chapter 15. We find again him teaching by example. John chapter 15 beginning in verse 10. John 15 verse 10. Jesus says, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus says now, You keep the commandments and you will abide in my love. And then what are the next two words? Even as, you see that? 
even as, what's he saying? I've given you an example. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus and the Father abide. They were abiding together. And you will abide with Jesus when you keep his commandments. Was the Father pleased with Jesus keeping his commandments? Was the Father, God the Father, pleased with God the Son when God the Son kept his commandments? Oh, he was well pleased. This is my, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Why? Because he kept the commandments. And then I pray that God will help us to us to keep Jesus' commandments just like he kept the Father's commandments and then we will abide in his love even as he abides in the Father's love. Now that's verse 10. Watch verse 11. These things I've spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. Now listen to verse 12. Here's another one. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Now he just said Love one another. What, now, is that all he did? Just put a period there? Love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. What did he, how did he teach them how to love? By example. Did he just tell them love one another? No, he showed them how to love one another. All of you parents, listen carefully. How many of you want your children to grow up to be good spouses? Well... Most, most of your children are going to grow up to be the same kind of spouse you are. You can teach them. You can get them to quote scripture. You can get them to memorize every verse about being a good husband or a good wife. You know what they're going to do? They're going to follow the example that you gave them. You want to know how good a husband or wife you are? You watch your children when, you get, when they get grown. It'll tell you a lot about what you taught them when they were growing up. What you taught them out of your mouth, or you can take them to church every Sunday. Let me tell you something. You're not raising, you're not bringing up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord just by taking them to church three or four times a week. You're not doing that. In fact, you're wasting your time and you're deceived by the devil if you think just taking your children to God's house is all they need to be brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You let them do what they want to the rest of the week and you're wasting your time in many ways, not completely. But I'm telling you, brethren, children learn by what they see day in and day out. That's how they learn. You teach them at home. Teach them how? Teach them with your mouth and teach them by example. Teach them both ways. That's what, who's the great teacher? Who's the greatest teacher of them all? Jesus Christ. What did Nicodemus say? We know that thou art a teacher come from God. Here he is teaching now. Teaching by word and teaching by example. He says now I want you to love one another as I have loved you. You, you parents that are telling your children that you love your sister. Now if you want your son to love your daughter, you love your wife. Show them how to love. Show them what love's all about. Not the words, but the actions. Actions, my daddy always used to say, actions speak louder than, Brother David, you're an old man, what did he say? Actions speak louder than words. I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one any day. Listen, brethren, you can say all you want to with your mouth, but they're watching the way you live. Did Jesus teach us a lot? With the words. He teaches us a lot with words. You know what he followed it up with? Example. His words and his deeds harmonized completely. He never taught something that he didn't live it. Look in your Bibles at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Here's another way, uh, another thing. Here's something else Jesus taught us. In Colossians chapter 3, listen please to verses 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 and 13. Remember now, way back yonder, maybe two weeks ago, maybe last week, I'm not sure. We looked at the text, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
And so I'm asking you this morning, how much have you learned from Jesus? Have you learned how to love one another? Have you learned how to humble yourselves before one another? I'm not talking about once a year in the communion service. If that's the only time you're humbling yourself before your brethren, again, you haven't learned anything about humility. Have you learned anything about keeping the commandments? Have you really learned what Jesus has to say? Listen now in uh, Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 and 13. Colossians 3 verse 12, the word of God says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and, listen carefully, forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now, what's he saying? What's the main? He talked about several things, but what does he concentrate on? Forgiving one another. Now, how are you going to know how to forgive? Even as Christ has forgiven you. Sometimes people say, well, I just can't forgive them. Jesus said, Jesus said, this is in little red letters. Some people, I get upset with people that say they just like the red letters in God's word. All this is God's word. Red and black letters. It's all the word of God. But you tell me something that you don't like in uh, black and I'll show it to you in red too. Jesus taught to forgive. He taught us in words, but he taught us by example. He just said, follow me. Follow me. You know what he'll teach you if you follow him? He'll teach you humility. He'll teach you to keep the commandments. He'll teach you to love one another, he'll teach you to forgive one another. Forgive one another. Even as Christ forgave you. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Did you know that's the way it is with most people that are offending you? They really don't understand. They don't understand what they're doing. Most of them don't. They don't have all the teaching and the learning. They don't have all the experiences. Please forgive one another. Forgive one another. Be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. One more thing about forgiving. Turn to First Peter, about ten pages past where we're reading. Turn to First First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. Listen, beginning in verse nineteen. First Peter. First Peter chapter two. Beginning in verse 19. Here's something else Jesus taught us. Not just by the words of his mouth, but he taught us by example. You'd be amazed. I wish that we had... I look forward to getting to heaven because rather than in heaven, I, it, it, it's just going to all be laid out. And we can't cover everything that Jesus showed us and taught us by example, but I hope that you're learning. Jesus taught us by word and he taught us by example. And if we're going to do very effective teaching... We're going to have to teach in word and in deed. In deed and in truth. Listen now to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 19. The word of God says, For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Rather than, that hurts to suffer. It hurts when you've done something wrong to suffer, but when you've done something right and you suffer for it, that hurts. Because usually that suffering is going to come from your brethren. And it says, this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also hath suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You want to know how to suffer? Look at Jesus. He showed, He told you to suffer. He said, you're going to suffer. And then he showed you how to suffer in the right way. What an amazing teacher. What an amazing teacher Jesus is. And I'm amazed that in my life, you see, Jesus wasn't the only good teacher in the Word of God. He was the great teacher, but 
Paul said on one occasion, he said, you follow me as I follow Christ. All of you are supposed to be teachers. In closing, I want you to go to two scriptures. Jesus says this. We'll, I'll just mention this. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon Take my yoke upon you and, what's the next word? Learn of me. If you're not learning from Christ, it's because you haven't taken his yoke upon you. You're not yoked up with Christ. You may be yoked up with the devil. If you're not learning from Christ, you're, you're yoked up to the wrong one. If you take Christ's yoke upon you, you will learn of him. And here's a prayer that David gave, and we'll close with this. In Psalm 25 and verse 5, David says this. David said, Lord, lead me and teach me. Think about that. That's in Psalm 25, verse 5. You can go home and read the entire verse. He said, Lord, lead me and teach me. Do you want to be taught? you want Jesus to teach you? He's given you... If you want to learn from Jesus, if you want to learn from Jesus, you're going to have to study His Word. Because He'll show you in His Word exactly how to live. He'll teach you in His Word, and He'll teach you by His life how to live. May God help us to not be destroyed for lack of knowledge. But may God help us to learn from Jesus is my prayer for Christ's sake.